Hi, I'm Selva Prabhakaran. In this one, let's try to understand the difference between confidence intervals and prediction intervals. This difference, this confusion can arise, especially when you're trying to build a machine learning model. So here, we have a overless linear regression built using stats models package. The model is already trained. We will see the entire code shortly, okay? So we are looking at the code at which we are making the prediction. So from this model, we are trying to get prediction for the entire data set. We are using only the two features, seventh and the eighth features. So we are using this to get the predictions. Now see the output. We have the predictions for the first two rows. So these are the predicted values. But along with this, we have the confidence intervals. We also have the prediction intervals. Now look at this. 19.62 is the mean prediction. Confidence intervals is quite close to 19.6. But the width of the, the range of the prediction interval is quite large. You can see that clearly. If we try to plot the predicted value, so here in the middle, right over here in the middle, the blue line, these are the predicted, the fitted lines. These two lines, this is the confidence interval. You can look at the prediction interval that is quite large over here. So what is the difference between these two? What is the fundamental difference? Now in order to understand this difference, we need to understand a little bit of the concept behind these ideas. So one thing we need to keep in mind is both confidence intervals as well as prediction intervals deal with describing the uncertainty behind the statistical estimates. The uncertainty described by confidence interval specifically deals with the uncertainty that comes from the sampling aspect. For example, let's say you have a large population of men and you want to find their mean age. The true population mean is something, say, the true population in mean is 43 years, which is something we may not know. So there's a large population. Now we want to estimate this true population mean by taking a small sample. Okay, we cannot go and measure every other individual here, right? So we take a small sample and then measure the mean of this sample. From this mean, we try to estimate the population mean. So we know this number. From this number, we want to estimate this particular number. So typically, when we do the when we do the estimation, we will have a given mean value plus or minus some sort of a range will be attached to it. This whole thing, whole idea, can be computed either using something like bootstrapping estimates. You say bootstrapping. What bootstrapping means is you take a lot of samples. So this one particular sample you take, measure the mean. Right? You take a, you have a number line, so you take a one particular sample, measure the mean, right? We have the age on the x-axis, we have a measure, measure the mean here. Again, you take another sample, that mean might be something different from that mean. Again, you take another sample, that might have a mean over here. Likewise, you take lot of sample, hundreds of thousands of samples, and you will measure the mean across the different samples. So we use all the different measurements from these samples. And we will have a certain mean around here, right? So we will use the 95 percentage, the area under this curve, the whole curve, which occupies 95 percentage of the data point. So we will take the mean value and the range where it covers 95 percentage of the data points. We will use that to estimate a mean and a confidence interval around the mean. So this estimation you can do using either bootstrapping or you can also measure it directly using a statistical formula. Now, a typical formula you would end up using for this might look something like this. The, the estimated population mean could be the sample mean plus t critical, t critical plus standard deviation, standard deviation of the sample divided by the number of observations in the sample. The t critical is a critical value based on a t distribution for a given significance level. So let's come back to the code and see what is going on and how this can relate to confidence intervals. First, import the packages, NumPy, Pandas, and Stat models. Then we import the data set, which is bostonhousing.csv, stored in DF data frame. And these are the features. We have various features here. And the variable that we want to predict is the median value of the house. This is stored as the y, y variable. Then to the x X features, we add a column. This is supposed to serve as the intercept. But what we end up doing is we just include just one single feature. The feature name is DIS. Okay, that particular column alone we are using here. Right? And then we are passing the Y and the X to SM.OLS 
So it will train the model. So this particular object is a trained model. And we look at the model summary. So this is the model summary. Okay, so we have the DIS column. This is your x. The predicted value y hat is going to be nothing but this coefficient, which is nothing but beta multiplied by DIS value. This is going to be the predicted value of your median value of housing price. Now look at this coefficient. We have the mean value of the coefficient, which is usually what we refer to. Okay, in addition to this, you also get the confidence intervals for this particular coefficient here. So this is the lower bound and this is the upper bound. So if you substitute 4.9857985 into this equation, so y hat equals to 4.7985 into one particular value of DIS, say you take the first particular first value of DIS in the data set. So that value, let's call it k. So this is going to be your predicted value. Along with this, the lower bound of the confidence interval is going to be 4.545 multiplied by k and the upper bound would be this, this number, 5.052 multiplied by k. I hope this is clear. This is how we compute the confidence intervals, which is what we plot towards the end. If you go to the bottom of this notebook, here we have this green line here, right? This is the upper bound of the confidence limit. Likewise, this is the lower bound here. And the uncertainty that this confidence limit deals with is with respect to our data set. What I mean by this is we are using this bostonhousing.csv data set. I think this data set has somewhere around 1000 observations or something. But this is not the entire population of Boston housings, the houses in Boston, let's say. This is a sample this data set is a sample of all the houses. Right? This is not the entire population. In order to bring in a representation of the entire population of the Boston housing data, right? the original house, the entire population of houses in Boston, let's say. For that purpose, we use the confidence, confidence intervals. If that is the confidence intervals, then what is prediction interval? What is this? Now, prediction interval, in addition to covering up for the uncertainty in the sampling prediction interval also makes up for the errors the errors that exist in the predictions for example let's say for a particular value of dis for a particular value of dis you can see values of the house on this value this value this value the entire range of values right here up to up to this point you see for the same value of dis you have different different values of the median values of houses the y variable Likewise, for here, this particular value of DIS, you have an entire range of values here. These are all possible values of housing prices that could be observed for this particular value of DIS. In order to describe the uncertainty for the different values of Y for a given value of X, right? These are, these are all, so we are predicting a mean and these are the different errors that could happen. So in order to account for this, we include the standard deviations of the errors as well and use it for coming up with the prediction intervals, which usually has a much wider range compared to the range that you would observe for a confidence intervals. So that's the primary difference between prediction interval and confidence intervals.